here in the book of Romans, Romans chapter number 1, mm-hmm. we'll be taking a look at verses 1 through 15 in this, uh, this passage here. And uh, I like, like this and title this, It's Good to Know. Can you just repeat after me? It's good to know. It's good to know. It is good to know. It really is. Um, and here in this text here, we're going to see just how good it is to know. Uh, Romans here was written by Paul, and um, and all of our Bibles, some most of our Bibles have somewhat of an introductory to this particular book, and and for the sake of writing it all out, I want to read it out, um, which is already written out in the book, in our Bibles, in some of the Bibles, but mine pretty much uh, talks about here this book of Romans here, and and it says Romans has been called the constitution of Christianity, the Christian manifesto, the cathedral of the Christian faith. And, uh, and so Romans really have been the uh, uh, base of a lot of teaching that we have in our different churches. Uh, the epistle of Romans was written uh, from, by Paul uh, from Corinth during Paul's third missionary journey. And before his departure for Jerusalem, uh, Paul stayed in Corinth for three months. Uh, Paul anticipated his departure for Jerusalem following his trip to Jerusalem to deliver the collection for the Jerusalem saints. I remember when he collected some money from Corinth to take down to the, um, that take, that take back to Jerusalem for the saints. Uh, Paul intended to make a fourth missionary journey to the western extremity of the Roman Empire. He wanted the Roman church to assist him with making that journey and wrote this epistle to establish contact with the Roman church in preparation for the anticipated visit. And it's interesting how this, when it began to talk about the background of, of the book of Romans and what was going on uh, during the time. We see some things in which sometimes you hear it being used. It says that the church at Rome was most likely founded by converts of Peter's ministry at Pentecost or per- perhaps of Paul's ministry who had migrated to Rome. Rome was the center of the Roman Empire because of the Romans' passion for road construction Travel was relatively easy and the same. Y'all hear this, remember this, all roads lead to Rome, <laughs> was lit- literally true. Uh, the Greek language was common throughout the Roman Empire for it was the language of, of culture. Uh, 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 Latin was the language of government and uh, citizens moving to Rome would have no trouble communicating in their new environment. And this right here is another good piece of information. The church was primarily made up of Gentiles and had very little central organization or local church government. Small groups of believers met all over the city. This is the reason that the epistle is not addressed to the church at Rome but to the saints. Uh, so normally in Paul's writing, he would write to the church, but here he's writing to the saints. And that's what we're going to see in this per- in his first chapter, in his introduction, how it's laid out uh, for us. So here in verse number one, it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Now uh, that's important to what was just made mentioned there. He's first of all a servant or slave of Jesus Christ, called to be, and that call to be, we're going to look at that also, an apostle, look at that, separated unto the gospel of God. And then he says, I'm going to read down to verse 6, which, is, which he had promised of four or before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. See, they all talked about Jesus Christ, uh, the Old Testament. Look at 3. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made or uh, 
which is born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So by the resurrection, by, by the resurrection of the dead, uh, by whom we have received grace, by whom, talking about Jesus Christ, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Six says, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. Look here. Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. Now that portion of scripture I would just simply like to say know your calling. Once again this is entitled it's good to know. So first part verses 1 through 6 know your calling. Now I've broken this down in the sense of kind of three um, well, four really but know your calling know your family know your purpose now you know i'd say and not necessarily in that order which when we take it in all totality but in the sense of i'm, I'm going here in this passage i'm looking at and know your calling look here he says in verse number one paul a servant of jesus christ and here he is called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of god so first here, Paul lets the people know who, who he is. So likewise, we got to know our calling. Uh, knowing a calling, and then we wonder sometimes, what is a calling then? Here, Paul says that he, his calling is what? To be an apostle. It says it right there in the Word of God. We're not going to create stuff, and we're not going to make it. It's right here in the Word. He says, so his calling was to be, or... His calling is an apostle. And now we wonder what is an apostle. The Bible lets us know apostle is one who is sent. Now we often say that, that when God, uh, God calls people, then, then he calls them. Uh, but we also know that people do what? Call themselves, don't they do it? And, and so therefore we have this one rendering. We say that some are called and some just went, right? Uh, so now we know that, that in, in this, which we're going to get to the other one, Garden Saint, because we know that there's only two categories of people in the Lord. Well, not so much in the Lord, but two categories of people. There are the saints, and then there are the, the ain'ts. Uh, so we got to know, know your calling. So therefore here, Paul knows his calling as being an apostle, and then he goes on and says, which he pr had promised, or before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we got to know our calling in uh, Christ our Lord, which was made or born of the seed of David according to the flesh. So Jesus Christ himself, it was backed up from Scripture and also his lineage. And declared to be the son of God, he says, with power, backed up with power, according to the spirit of holiness or the spirit of God, by the resurrection from the dead. Jesus died and then what? He got up. So he is the son of God, by whom, he says, we have received grace and uh, apostleship uh, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. He has been called and he received that grace and apostleship by a man or from Jesus Christ, who is the son of God, a man, and also the seed of, of David, according uh, to the flesh. So now we see that when we got to know our calling and we see that, that Paul said that his calling is to be an apostle. Now, what is an apostle? We said one, one who was sent. Uh, an apostle is a calling. 
So the question is, is that what is your calling? we got to know our calling. He says right here to the saints right here in verse number, I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on. He says not only was he there, uh, uh, an apostle, but he says right here in verse number 7. Pull 7 in for a minute. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, what? Called to be what? Saints. Now we know that saints itself is also a calling. How do we know that saints is, saint is a calling? Saint is who we are in the Lord. Peter tells us that, that we also, amen, uh, have that. Now we're just looking for that right fast and everything just to share with us. He says that, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to find it right here in 1 Peter chapter number 2. He says, but you are a chosen generation, amen, a royal priesthood. Huh? Uh, and then he says, a holy nation. Uh, can you tell somebody that I'm called? Uh, now y'all got to tell somebody that you're called because when you voice it, when you say it, you mean it and because you mean it, that, that says something to you. That, that means something to you. That, that means that when I got a calling, I got to do something about it. Yeah. A calling just ain't no title. Uh, a calling is an action. It's a, a call to action. Amen. You see? Uh, 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 when, when, when your parents call you, they're they not just simply saying, you know, whatever your name is. They want some action from that. They want you to respond. Yes. They want you to come here. Queen. Yes. Now. You see, so God calls us. He says right here, I'm going to come to you, he says that ye should show forth, so therefore, that calling of being a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, he said, why? That we may show, that's some action, show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So therefore, we are called, amen, to do something, amen, for the Lord. That's right. That's what we're doing. We are born again, and because we are born again, we are born again believers. And because we're born again believers, not only that, but we're blood bought by Jesus Christ. Not only that, we're angels fought. Don't you know the angels are fighting for you? Yeah. yeah. You can't see them, no, you can't see them. But maybe, just maybe, if you ask God, He might open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, so you can see it. But. But, but here there are things that's happening in the spirit world that we can't see. Amen. But God, amen, has, as is often said, I were back. Not only are we angel, are we, are we angel fall, but also we are armor wearing. Amen. The Bible tells us that we are to wear the whole armor of God. Not part of it. Amen. Not just hold, amen, this or not just put on this, but, but the whole armor of God. Amen. Now that we are also sword toting. Amen. How many of you here, amen, tote a sword? Amen. Y'all know what tote means, don't you? Uh huh. Amen. How many, how many of you are sword toting people? Huh? Yeah, y'all want to know? I ain't talking about no, no, uh, no, uh, you know, going to, going to, you know, sword fighting, nothing like that. I ain't talking about Zorro sword, all right? I'm talking about the Word of God, y'all. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Sword told him. Yes, we are. Amen. Saints. Amen. We're called. Amen. Now, amen. The saints. Being a saint, that means that we are walking in our in our calling. Uh, the Bible also lets us know, amen, over here in Ephesians, and I'm just going to turn to it. Whenever I, I say it, I'm going to turn to it. You ain't got to, but I'm going to turn to it. I'm going to read from the Word of God. And, amen, it says right here in uh, chapter number 4, verse number 1 of Ephesians, it says, I therefore... The prisoner of the Lord, amen, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation or the calling wherewith you are called. That means that, look, it's a present thing. It's a right now thing. So we're called. That means that we are to walk in that wind now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, not talk about yesterday's news, but right now. We are to walk in the calling that God, amen, has uh, for us. Amen. Y'all, I want to I I get it right now. Y'all see that in the, in the King James Version? It says, look, walk worthy of the what? Vocation. Can you say vocation? vocation. Okay. He didn't say walk worthy in your vacation. Y'all know what vacation means, right? That means you done vacated, left, 
gone. So we walk worthy in the vocation or the calling, all right? And that's, and that's, what, and that's what it's talking about. That means that there's some action going on in your calling. Hey Amen. I was led to here in 1 Corinthians 15, 15 and 8. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that. And and it, and it says this right here. It says, uh, this, re, this is regarding Paul when he was talking about him, his calling and him being the apostle. He says this right here because, you know, a lot of times whenever you say who you are, you always want to, you always have a tendency of trying to back it up. Huh? Right? Maybe not. Maybe not everybody. You always have a tendency of trying to back it up. You know what I mean? But Paul, he, he had to always seem like this. To back himself up, man. He had to, had to uh, tell folk, hey, man, his, his, you know, give a testimony and stuff. Yeah, I know we give testimonies to different people when we talk to them about something. They ask you about something. And, and we share a testimony with them, what God has done in our lives and everything. And when we get to talking about what God has done in our lives and, and how we came to the Lord and stuff, we start getting... Y'all, y'all, y'all know that feeling? Get excited again, don't you? Yeah, you get to tell somebody about how, you know, and that's why every now and then we got to go back. Got to go back and remember, and, and that's, our, that's our third point. What's your purpose? And then that thing is remember how you got where you are and why. And, and it's and something that's going to go in you then, especially when you're sharing with somebody, telling somebody about your journey, and, and, then, and, then, and then it just comes back and it's so exciting. You know, you're ready to just tell more people if you can. Uh, so, uh, you know, so we got we to gotta every now and then just go back to, to where God, amen, has, has called us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so here in 15, amen, 1 Corinthians 15 and 8 says, or 15 and 8 says, and last, I'm going to read 7 too. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And of course, look at this verse number 8, talking about Jesus Christ. This is Paul. And last of all, he was seen of who? Me also. As one born out of due time. Why did Paul make mention of that? Remember Paul said what his calling was? His calling is an apostle. I want us to go to Acts chapter number 1. I know we have a lot of apostles, amen, among us in, in this world and stuff like that. And, and, uh, and they, they about have the same testimony as Paul, maybe, I don't know. But uh, y'all remember when Judas hung himself? Or basically, you know, he died, right? Y'all, y'all remember that, right? And somebody had to take his place because the scripture said it. All right? They just didn't do stuff just, just to do it. You know, uh, but they did it because the scripture said it. And verse number 20, look at 20. It says, for it is written in the book of Psalms. Those brothers, they were doing some, some studying too. Let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein. And take what it says. And his bishopric, it says right here, uh, it says, let another take. And he goes on and says, uh, wherefore now, and of course his, his uh, uh, office, this bishopric is his office as an overseer okay, 21 wherefore of these men have look at this right here uh, accompanied uh, with us, basically been with us right, all the time that, look at this the Lord Jesus went where in and out among us beginning from the baptism of John and until that same day that he was taken up from us must one did it say must? must one what is that? be ordained or become to be a witness with us of his what? resurrection and as they, as they continued on, they, 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 they uh, uh, drew lots. Uh, uh, and, and of course, the one that ended up getting it was Matthias. Uh, so uh, Paul here in chapter 15 over there in 1 Corinthians said, And last of all, the scene of him. So what Paul has done, 
He laid out the case that he was or is an apostle. An apostle had to have been with them from the beginning to the end and also seen the resurrection. So Paul lays it out and says, look, I know the rule. I know the law, basically. But Jesus Christ has called me to be an apostle. And over the centuries, nobody has argued that and not sure that nobody will. Uh, I just wanted to point that out, y'all, okay? Look, 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 look. And then back here in, in, our, in our Romans chapter number one, y'all, don't, don't, uh, stay with me, all right? Verses seven through 13, look at, the, look at verse number seven. Okay, so first of all, know your calling. We gotta know our calling, y'all, okay? We gotta know our calling. Another pastor scripture that talked about the calling with Jeremiah. Y'all remember Jeremiah, don't y'all? Y'all remember Jeremiah? Okay, since some of us don't, let us uh, take a look at it here. Okay, Jeremiah uh, chapter number, uh, let me see where it is. Jeremiah chapter number one. Jeremiah chapter number one. Somebody get there right fast and you, uh, go to chapter number one and go ahead and read, read verses of, of four through ten. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Y'all hear that? Uh-huh. Before you were born, I set you apart. Y'all hear that? Uh-huh. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Mm-hmm. Yes. As of Soviet Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. Uh-huh. But the Lord said to me, do not say that I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, mm -hmm. for I am with you, and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See today... I anoint you over nations and kingdoms to up to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Amen. Does y'all see that? I want us to see that because what God does, God calls, amen, his people. And if God has called you, God has given you what you need or do for what he has purposed you to do. I do like this about Jeremiah because Jeremiah said, look, uh, you know, it says right here, it says, before I formed thee in the belly, mm -hmm. before I, I, I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. God knows us. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I what? Sanctified you or appointed you. And then he says that or, or set you apart. And then he says, I ordained you or appointed you a prophet unto the nations. Amen. Jeremiah knew his calling. Amen. When we have our calling, we are sure of what God has called us, amen, to do. Amen. He called us, amen. He called him. And, verse, and, and uh, going back to uh, Romans chapter number 1, verse number 7, it says, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the, as, as it's often said, it's, it's, it's Paul's normal greetings when he goes into the letters and everything. You know, peace, it says grace and everything uh, uh, to you. And then he goes on to verse number, he says, First, I thank my God, and this is know your family, this is know your family, y'all. Okay, he's writing to his family. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. That means that they were on his mind, making requests if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. 
That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the, look at this right here, by the mutual faith, amen, both of you and me. What Paul is saying right here, look, it's not all about me. He said, look, you got some faith that's been mentioned all over the world. And if that's the case, then look, when I come and talk to you, I know I'm going to be blessed already. He goes on and says in 13, now, I would not have you ignorant, uh -huh. brethren, that oftentimes I purposed, he says, to come unto you, but was let hitherto or was hindered that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other, other Gentiles. Paul had a desire to go to where, amen, his family, his family was. What about this family? We have our natural family, y'all, and we have our spiritual family. Yes, we do. Now, let me let you know on a secret right here. You can find un friendly, the unfriendly even in your natural family. Is that right? Yes. How so can. And, and, uh, you say what? <laughs> Look, uh, and, but you know what? The spiritual family on the other hand, we are full of love and support. Can we get a smile emoji on that one? <laughs> Don't be mistaken. Because we know that unfriend, in, our, the unfriendly can be in either place. Amen. But ain't supposed to be among the saints though. That's right. But you know what? How and why do we have a spiritual family? I mean, after all, here we are coming together on Sunday, Wednesday, whenever we have a call to worship, we come together, we get to know each other, and we call each other family. Now, that means that folk down the street can be our family too, right? Why is that? Spiritual? Because why? There we go. Faith in God. Y'all catch that? We got together and that's what makes us a family. Y'all remember that prayer, right? Our Father. That means, guess what? Each and every one of uh, us are what? Brothers and sisters. Be in Christ. We got to be kind of our father. And that's, that's right. That's what we talk about. So very inclusive, you know, regarding all of us who are in Christ. So we're family. Amen. That's right. So we have our spiritual, amen, family. And we always got to keep that in mind. So not only do must we know our calling, but we also must know our family. We got to know your, you got to know your family. You got to know them. Yeah. I spend more time with my sisters in the church than I do outside of the church. You know, you know that's bad. I, I know it. You know, and then uh, what, what happens is that, you know, every now and then when we get together, you know, we we'll say, you know, we ought to do this how often? More, more often, right? <laughs> and then until the next time, you know. And this is not this is not but it's us a lot of us do that. But yet there are some that, uh, some families that actually do things quite often, you know, and we never want to say, you know, I should have, I could have, I would have. So we need to do it when? While we can. Tomorrow, we got a Walmart in Millington too. We all drive on the expressway every now and again. Ain't no telling. We all gather in, in, in places, Bill Street, uh, and in any other place that's famous and crowded. Church. So therefore, when we do come together, we must be mindful to, to love one another and, and be considerate of one another and find out about one another. Because today might just be the last time. Amen. Amen. So we got to know our calling and also we got to know our family. And then last, no, it's not last. Look at 14, 15. Look at 14 and 15. I am debtor. Know your, pur know your purpose. Know your purpose. I am debtor both to the Greeks, to the barbarians, both to the wise 
and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Wow. Know your purpose. Know your purpose. We've been hearing purpose and all like that for many years, probably since we've been saved, and from a lot of different uh, big time preachers about purpose and purpose and purpose and know your purpose and the purpose. And, and I'm going to give you the, the, the steps to attain your purpose and the purpose and, and the purpose. God bless all of them, especially all of y'all who bought those books. Let's look in the Bible about purpose. Paul says right here in verse 14, I am debtor or under obligation. I must, I ought to, I should, I owe, I must do it. Paul said he is under obligation. But Paul is saying, he said, that is his purpose. That is his passion. What is purpose? Purpose is when Paul said it best. It ain't going to cost us nothing but time. Look at Acts chapter number 9. Acts chapter number 9, verses 4 through 6. As a matter of fact, for some of us who hadn't taken a look at this in a long, long time, let us start at verse number 1. And we're going to read down to verse number 6. If somebody there, you can read it loud. Acts 9, verses 1 through 6. Meanwhile, Saul was still there. Yeah. What is that? Uh, Acts 9, verses 1 through 6. Yes. Go for it. I'm, I'm reading from the New Life Study Bible. Okay. The like the Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue to Damascus. So that if he found any of those who belong to the way, to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Now this is Saul, right? right. And y'all know that Saul is who? Paul. Paul. Okay, go ahead. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from the heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul. Why don't you persecute me? Who's that voice? Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who are you? Lord, Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, then. All right, then. Uh, very good. Now, you see this right here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this right here. Take a listen to this right uh, in um, verse number uh, five, uh, uh, verse number five and six. Take a listen. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. He goes in verse number six. Take a listen to this. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord. Listen, listen, listen. What wilt thou have me to do? Lord, what wilt thou have for me to do? Saul has now come to someone whom he can't do anything about. He now knows that there is someone greater than he is. And now what Paul has now done has, amen, bowed down to the one who was greater than him. Have we made it there? Have we gotten there yet? Have we gotten there yet? Bow down to the one who is greater than him. And now that he's done that, he knows what to do. 
Because a Saul is a smart man, a Pharisee, he goes on and says, Lord, he identifies him, he understands him, he knows him. He put a free living place above him. Yes. Lord, what would you have for me to do? So now what he's doing now that he has now uh, uh, amen, and have, uh, humbled himself yeah. and accepted whatever his Lord amen, has for him to do. Yeah. Saints, that's purpose. That, you don't even have to buy no book for that. That's purpose. That's what God would have us to do. Amen. That's what, that's what God would have us to do. He says it right here. What would you have for me to do? He basically left everything out. I'm done. I'm chasing down some folk who went over there to Damascus. I'm chasing them down. I'm on my way. And you just stopped me. You're bigger than I am. Now, I'm going to take my orders from you. What would you have for me to do? That's what, amen, our uh, uh, directive should be in the, in the sense that I'm doing what God would have me to do. He goes on, I mean, I, well, look, know your purpose. God, what would thou have for me to do? Paul knows that he is a debtor, a debtor, basically. Jesus told him, get up, go into the city. I tell you what you are to do. He told him all of that. What, he, what was happening? Drop down. Look, look at verse number 15 over there in Acts 9. He says this right here. Verse number 15 says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. He's talking to Ananias. Go thy way. For he, look at this, For he is a chosen vessel unto me. And look what he, Paul or Saul is to do. To do what? Bear my name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Purpose. Paul understood what his purpose was for God. Amen. We must understand what our purpose is. Amen. For God. It's not, what, it's not about us. It's about God. Because when we got saved, all of us should have said, you know, because we see so many people in the church, amen, doing this and doing that and everything. We just be, we just be looking and stuff like that. And when we get saved and stuff, we still watching everybody doing different stuff. And then I'll be and then, then the person probably say to themselves, What am I gonna do? Don't we do it? What am I gonna do? Don't ask yourself. Because any anytime you see what somebody else doing, you say that's too hard. I don't want to do that. Don't nobody want to do that. I don't want to do that. But when you ask God, what would you have for me to do? If you ask any of us, we say, whatever you see needs done, do it. You see? And then it leaves us in like, oh, I don't know what to do. Because you're asking us, ask God. What would you have for me to do? Because if I were a deacon or something say, do this, you know how long I'm going to do it? Till you get sick and tired of it. Till you get sick and tired of it. But when the Lord tell you to do this, you'll ride that horse till you can't ride no more. Y'all ain't heard that before. <laughs> so the thing is, is that when God gives you what to do, amen, purpose, now the thing gets into the point that here's where I'm going to go back. I'm going, to, I'm going back to one. The first point now. Now that I have a purpose, what God would have me to do, now the thing is, is that how do I do it? How do I do it? Not yet. How do I do it? This is where calling comes in. What purpose is, is the goal or the end game or what God would have you. But how to do it is your calling. 
The calling is your vehicle to get to where you're supposed to get to. And don't you know that even with vehicles, you got to learn how to drive? So you see, there's a process. Yes, I know my goal. I know what I want to do. But now I've got to work towards that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be some ups and maybe some downs. Yes. But I'm never going to take my eye off of what? The, the prize. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Because Jesus, yeah, because he told me this is what it is. All right? So, what is your purpose in life? What is your purpose in the life of the church? Even the local church. Upper Canaan. A lot of times God put in our spirit something that would drive us or some type of passion. Amen. And a lot of times we have a tendency to just stepping out, going on to do what that, that, that passion is. And then later on we figure out, God, what would you have me to do? What's, what's my calling? And you look back and someone would tell you or you find out yourself you've already been walking in your calling. Nobody just put no title on it. Because you're doing it for the Lord. So, question is, what drives you? And the statement is, not who drives you. What drives you? And not who drives you. And I say that because of the fact that the devil, if you let him ride, so what drives us? What desire do we have for the Lord to, to, to you know, and, and, and this is where you in, in conversation with God comes in. Because if you get the old devil ride, he's sure going to want to drive. Matter of fact, he'll take over. Yes, you know, the devil got a takeover spirit. Y'all know what a takeover spirit is? Yeah, he take over. Lastly, y'all, so we got to know our calling, know our family, know our purpose. And lastly, out of all that we talked about, we got to know Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. we got to know him. And our title was, It's Good to Know. Is that right? It's Good to Know. And if I could sing, I would sing this out. But since I can't, I'm going to open the door to church and leave with this thing. This is a song. No, this is good to know Jesus. That's it. Let's see that stand, please.